PFAS, or per- and polyfluorinated alkyl substances, are a problem. Also called forever chemicals, PFAS are commonly used in nonstick coatings, lubricants, and firefighting foams. But they're turning up everywhere. The chemical has been linked to everything from cancer and increased cholesterol to pregnancy problems. They have seeped into water systems across the nation, and just this week, the FDA announced that it found, quote, substantial levels of PFAS in food. It was in everything from grocery store meats and seafood to an off-the-shelf chocolate cake. I mean, it's even in my wells. So what are we doing about it? Not much. Some states have started suing manufacturers, but the nation seems crippled by the cleanup cost, which is estimated in the tens of billions of dollars. However, researchers from the Flinders University Institute for Nanoscale Science and Technology in Adelaide, Australia, have created a safe, environmentally friendly, and low-cost way to remove PFAS from water. Turns out, Australia has quite the PFAS problem too. Kind of a global issue. The researchers made an absorbent polymer from waste cooking oil and sulfur combined with powdered activated carbon, or PAC. PAC is a low-cost sorbent used to remove micropollutants from water. However, it creates a hazardous dust that is flammable and a respiration hazard. It can also cake, which blocks filters and membranes. The sulfur polymer support solves these problems. In initial tests, the polycarbon blend reduced the PFAS in a water sample from 150 parts per trillion to less than 23 parts per trillion, well below the 70 parts per trillion limit set by the EPA and other health organizations. The research was recently published in ACS Sustainable Chemistry and Engineering. Next, the team plans to test the blend on a commercial scale to prove that it's capable of purifying thousands of gallons of water. They're also looking into ways to recycle the material and destroy the PFAS. A team of researchers believes that the birth defect that leads to extra fingers and toes could provide a blueprint for a way to control robotic limbs. The condition is known as polydactyly, and it impacts one in every 500 babies. The extra digits are typically removed after birth, but the researchers found a few patients who kept their sixth finger and are studying how their brain adapted to the extra workload. The idea is to add robotic limbs and fingers to expand our natural abilities like having a surgeon that controls a third and robotic arm. The international team not only provided information for possible advancements in robotics, but also made a case for people to keep their extra limbs, as long as they're well-formed and functional. The researchers asked the subjects to perform various tasks, like tying shoelaces, typing on their phones, and playing video games, while they monitored their brain activity on an fMRI machine. They observed a set of control subjects with five fingers doing the same. The researchers found that the extra fingers had their own tendons, muscles, and nerves, as well as an extra corresponding brain region. They also performed many of the tasks better than their five-fingered counterparts. Their work, which was published in Nature Communications, is early. But controlling an extra robotic limb, as well as a polydactyl person, is unlikely. After all, they've been working with it since they were born. But with this new research, it's not impossible. Researchers from North Carolina State have created a new armor out of a composite metal foam, or CMF. During tests, the researchers fired a 50 caliber armor-piercing round 514 meters per second at the foam. It bounced off, didn't even leave an indentation on the back plate. They ran the same test with a bullet traveling 801 meters per second, and it left a mark, but it was only eight millimeters deep. The foam not only performed as well as traditional steel armor, but it's more than 50% lighter. This means that military vehicle designers could drastically cut down on overall weight without losing on safety. CMF is a foam made of hollow metallic spheres embedded into a metallic matrix made of steel, titanium, aluminum, and other metallic alloys. For the study, the researchers worked with steel steel CMF, which means that the spheres and matrix were made of steel. The armor included a ceramic faceplate, the CMF core, and a thin aluminum backplate. Dr. Afsana Rabi, a professor of mechanical and aerospace engineering at NC State, has spent years developing CMFs and investigating their unusual properties. It might actually be the coolest job in the world. In March 2018, she blew up a high explosive incendiary round next to the foam to see if it could stand up to the blast pressure and fragmentation at 5,000 feet per second. That's an anti-aircraft weapon and it worked. The foam also shields from X-rays, gamma rays, and neutron radiation. According to Robbie, the foam could soon be used for everything from space exploration to shipping nuclear waste. I'm David Manti, 
This is Engineering by Design.